Welcome. I had plans today to uh, participate in a drum circle and then go to a jazz concert with some musicians that I'm familiar with. But uh, once again, our illustrious governor's ever-changing protocols, guidelines, and plans have gotten in the way. So you, my friends, are the beneficiaries because once again, it's story time. What does an item like this have to do with music? Well, you would think not much, but in today's story, it looms rather large. So in our last story, we talked about a famous musician and his petulant, irritable, unpredictable, and dangerous behavior. Today, we're gonna feature a uh, not so famous musician and his unpredictable behavior and a uh, wild card from an audience member with a very large knife. Many years ago I was playing in a cover band with a few friends. I think we were a four-piece at the time. There were a couple of different versions of Mr. Funny, but uh, we were half covers, half originals, and we were, this was back in the 90s, and we were doing music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So primarily a classic rock cover band slash original band. We had a whole stage show. We were, you know, kind of billing ourselves as music in a nutshell, and uh, one of the first that I'd ever seen, I never, actually I never saw any others, there may be more now, but uh, classic rock show bands, you know, we had a whole production thing going. But we were playing in a very small club in a town called Darien Center, or just outside Darien in New York State, at a place called Indian Falls, and a little bar there I forget the name of, Cabin in the Woods type thing where everybody there came you know to to hang out on a weekend so it was a small but very enthusiastic crowd and uh they were dancing and you know whooping it up and having a good time and there was one fellow there dancing with two gals and uh two of these gals were Slightly larger framed uh, women. Um, uh, big boned, as they used to say. And this guy was skinny, but, uh, I, I don't know, I want to say real thin. He was thin, but somewhat imposing looking. Uh, you know, a tall biker dude with, you know, the leather chaps, uh, the leather hat, the vest. Uh, you know, the Harley boots, the whole deal. And a really, really long Bowie knife, bigger than the one I showed you at the beginning of this story. Um, maybe twice as big. So it was not quite a sword, but it was a really large Bowie knife. Just strapped to the side there, open carry type deal. Um, and they're all dancing around and having a good time. And then we, we stop and take a break. Um, as is warranted for hardworking musicians and, uh, I believe, federally mandated and OSHA regulated. In any event, most groups that do three sets take a break in between. Uh, even if they do two sets, two shows, they'll do, you know, a break in between. So we um, retired to the basement of this club, which um, functioned as the green room, the band hang. Uh, and right above us are the patrons and we can hear them stomping on the floor. Like it was a few minutes. We had just gotten started with a break and we were starting to look at the set list and figure out what we're going to do next. And we start here, boom, 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 stomping on the floor. Let's go. And there's a phrase that a lot of people know around here. I'm not going to repeat it now, but bleep, 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 get off your bleep and jam. That is what rowdy crowds do when they want the band to perform uh <laughs> and uh they were pounding on the floor and pounding on tables and we're hearing this so it's great hey they, they love us that's fantastic but 
you know, we need to take a break. We need to get the next set together and give us a few minutes. Will you leave us alone, please? So this goes on for a few minutes, and then we hear clomp, 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 clomp. And then the door open, and then the stairs to the, the cellar where we were, we see the boots begin to appear of the biker dude. Doom, 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 doom. And I go, ah, here we go. And we were all huddled around something that my friend Tony, a uh, fine musician, bass player, keyboardist, singer, guitarist, um, natural-born comedian, much to his and everyone around him's detriment, uh, he had invented something called the Velcro set list, which was a basically a piece of cardboard with three strips of Velcro for your, uh, your one, two, and three sets. And then all the tunes we currently did at that time as little cardboard cutouts with Velcro on the back. And rather than rewriting it all the time or printing them out and then having to make all these notes and change them on the gig, you could just go, like, order the songs for, for that night the way you want them, put it up where everybody can see it, and we've all, you know... We all know what we're doing. Because every band knows, you know, you go on break and then you argue for 25 minutes about what you're going to play and then you go play, right? So we're down there doing that. And we see these boots appear on the stairs and then we hear the clomp, clomp, and then, you know, more more of the dude appears, the leather chaps, the body, the, um, the face with the um, full ZZ Top beard. And he slowly walks over to where we are um, commiserating. Now, this guy, Tony, the bass player I told you about, he's, um, he's funny. He's, is he like funny haha -ha, or funny like a clown? He's both. Um, he's funny and he can't stop being funny, even when it's dangerous. In fact, he has a motto, which is, if I remember correctly, Never let your or your friend's safety get in the way of a good punchline. And he's lived his life by that motto. God bless him. So we were uh, trying to put this list together, and we hear the stomping, and then we see the imposing figure of Johnny Biker. And we all kind of stop and stare for a minute, like, hey, buddy, what's up? And he walks over. And he draws the knife. And he, in a dramatic fashion, he says, I think you should do this one. And whing, 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 the thing sticks into the... Like, I remember this like it was a movie, but I'm telling you, this is what happened. The knife stuck into, into the set list and actually, like, you know, quivered for a moment. And, uh... We recalled slightly in slight shock and he leans in and says listen here I'm dancing with two gals and both of them want to take me home tonight so let's go and I see the look on Tony's face and I know what's going to happen and yet I can't stop it in very slow motion in my mind I'm thinking no but he responds pretty quickly with hmm and what would be the combined total weight of these two gals? And all of us freeze in that moment in time where you could hear a camel mewling in Saudi Arabia, cat screeching in Moscow. It was quiet. And the guy leans in again, squinches up his eyes, and says, Oh, about half a ton. And then everyone was pals. We went up and played our set, and no one was knifed, and there was no need for a bio blood cleanup unit, which was good, because I like that. I like to keep that on the inside of me. Uh, but the moral of the story is, I don't know. I would choose your friends wisely if they're cut-ups. Muzzle them. Um, you never know whether you're going to crack wise on a... Uh, turns out to be a friendly, jolly, 
uh, non-murderous biker fellow who just happens to carry a large knife, or perhaps the wrong person. So kids, when you start your band, um, keep those wiseacres in check. And that's our story for today.